you're a Lightroom Classic user like I am, and you want to incorporate Luminar Neo into your workflow, then this video is for you. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video tutorial, you're going to see how to go from Lightroom to Luminar in a truly non-destructive manner with a step in the middle to Photoshop. If you're ready to see my full workflow from Lightroom to Luminar and back again, let's get started. Okay, so um, questions for you guys. We're gonna look at this one upside down again. Okay, where does your eye go? I'm gonna take myself off the screen so you can just see the image. Where does your eye go? Any thoughts? For me, it definitely goes to the tree. Okay, Ross says the tree. Anyone else? Aha. Uh -huh. Raymond says the road. Deb says the sky. David says the road. Shelly says the path. Okay, so there's lots of stuff uh, grabbing our attention, right? So we probably want our eye to go to the tree, right? And follow the road. So all of those are great answers, except sky. We don't want our eye going to the sky, right? So let me get back here and turn it right side up again. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is again, cropping. And if we think about um, composition and how our eyes, how we read things, okay? In our society, we speak English, or we all speak English as our main language that we're speaking right now. And you're, I gotta do this right now. Okay, so your, your eyes go from top to bottom, left to right. So which way is this path going? It's going right to left. It's going, it's going left to right. It's going left to right. It's going left to right, but it's, it's going out of the picture because your eyes go left to right. Do you follow me? Okay, bear with me here. Okay, so your eyes go left to right. So what happens if we flip it? Okay, and you have the ability to do that in Lightroom. Okay, so it's photo, flip horizontal. Now the road is coming into the picture instead of going out of the picture. Okay, so your eyes read left to right. You want your subject to be towards the right, not the left. Okay. Now um, let's take a look at the cropping. Okay, so we've got a lot of sky that is blank. Uh, again, a lot of foreground. Now I'm gonna come in closer. We may end up with some kind of a panorama thing again. Right? I'm not worried about how, how the aspect ratio is. I just worry, I'm just focused on the image. See how there's a bright section of the land down here? Um, I'm gonna come in to come into the shadow. I wanna keep the right because I want to keep the clouds. I want to get rid of some of the sky. So we're kind of putting that horizon on this line here. And I feel like I want less, less road, a little bit less road, maybe something like that, right? Right, can you see the difference already? Now I'm gonna go through the steps fairly quickly. I'm gonna do landscape profile, blacks and whites. We're gonna do a little bit of contrast. Definitely, I'm going to adjust the color. As let's just go with daylight, daylight, and then adjust it a little bit less pink. And I worked on the color again. So luminance, green, darker, okay. yellow, a little brighter. Now you can see why I cropped out that bottom area. Okay, darken the blue. And I tend to like to bring the saturation of the sky down as well as the yellow. Okay, I don't want to have too much yellow. And I might shift them a little bit this way. How's our blue looking? And so before and after, so it's already brought out the sky. Okay. Uh, next, oh, do I have masks on here? No. Let me check the highlights again. We check oh, a little bit more on this blacks. So even if I go to really far with the black, if I want more contrast, 
the best way is to go into the tone curve, right? So I can go further with the tone curve than I can with the black slider, okay? I can also darken the exposure overall, like so. And then we can get into individual masking again, okay? So I can do the sky, but if I'm gonna do a sky replacement, it kind of doesn't make any sense. So I'm still debating as to whether or not I'm gonna do a sky replacement. So I'm gonna edit it and then make my decision. Okay, so I wanna darken it for sure, okay? But not too far, because if you go crazy, it looks obvious, right? So darken it. And I feel like the color is, is still a bit wonky. I'm not sure what color I want it to be. That looks a, a little better, I think. Okay, I think there's a spot in the sky. Maybe a little less pink. And remember, if we add black, you get more color, okay? Same thing with dehaze. If you increase the dehaze, right? So now you can see the spots. So I'm actually gonna leave it like that for a moment, <laughs> okay? Just so that I can see the spots. And I'm gonna get rid of these spots here. So there's some, some gunky things on the sensor here that's causing that. Now this one actually is a cloud, but it looks like a spot, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Right, and I think there's one over here. So I'm just doing that real quickly. And then I could go back to the mask. So I used that dehaze slider to tell me where the spots were and then just put it back, right? So I'm not entirely sure that I would change the sky here, right? Cause it's, it's simple and it's effective, right? So already, let's see a before. So it was very flat and after, okay? Now, if we want to change the sky, um, we can also do the things we did before, check the lens corrections, make sure the chromatic aeration is checked off and so on, right? So maybe I want that distortion back. And, oh, why is my mask telling me? Tells me I need to update my mask. So whenever you see a little red, dot here, it means that something that you've done as an automated mask or an AI uh, needs updating, okay? So if you see a little red dot, open your mask and check for that, okay? All right, so now let's say we're done with the Lightroom edit. And let's just see what I did with this image earlier to see how close I got on this one. Okay, pretty close. I did a little bit different color on this one and cropped in a little bit tighter, but you get the idea, it was pretty close, okay? Um, and the same the same thing applied. I kind of like this color better. I'm gonna go with this edit, actually. <laughs> Let's go with this edit, right? So if we want to continue from here, um, let me show you what else I did on this edit. Oh, see, it's got a red one, so I need to update it again. So I gotta go to sky, update. So it had a red dot. And what I did on this one was I did a mask on the tree area and I increased the texture and clarity. And then I did a inverted one on the outer part <coughs> just to darken that area a little bit. Okay, so I kind of made a custom vignette like so. Okay, so before, oh, uh, right, I need a before in my history panel. Okay, so from here, if we do want to change the sky, we have two options. We can go directly to Luminar by choosing Edit In and choosing Luminar, okay? But if there's more stuff that you think you're going to want to do, or if you think that you want to change the sky and then come back later and change it to a different sky, then I would rec going, I recommend doing this instead, okay? So we're going to open as a smart object in Photoshop, okay? All right, there we go. Okay, so now we are in Photoshop over here. Um, this is Photoshop beta, so it does have the generative AI things. So because it's Photoshop beta and generative AI, we could literally just select the sky and say, make a new sky, but we're not gonna cheat. We're gonna, we're gonna go into Luminar. So let me get my, where's my layers? There we go. Okay, so this layer, 
is a smart object. You can tell because of this little guy right here, this little logo or icon. And whatever I do on this layer, it's going to save it and remember it, but it's it's what's called non-destructive editing. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna open, oops, I gotta select the layer. From here, I'm gonna open Luminar Neo, okay? So it's an extra step, instead of going directly from Lightroom to Luminar Neo, I'm going to Photoshop first as a layer and then going to Neo. Okay, so now that I'm here, we can go and find a sky. Okay. Yeah, Rob says that I have eagle eyes. I see things that other people don't see. Um, I'm going to go into my sky pack number one. Now, there's lots of sky packs that you can get from the Skyland Marketplace, but of course, we have some as well. So if you could please share our um, ultimate sky pack. We've got two different sky packs available, and this first one has sort of some general skies, and my second sky pack has some night skies like Aurora and some blue hour shots as well as some storm clouds, right? So if you'd like to add some Aurora to your images, check that one out. Okay, so let's see, what kind of sky can we put in here? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in the wrong kind of sky. So what is the wrong kind of sky? The sky that you put in must match your image. By that, I mean it has to match the direction of light um, and make sense, okay? So take a look at this image here. The, the light, there's something creating a giant shadow here. So there's probably a bank of trees over on that left side, right? Well, it was right because we flipped it, okay? So the light is coming from over there, right? But if we put this like this, does that make sense? Because where is the light coming from in the new sky? We need to global that, right? Where's the, where's the light coming from in the new sky? Over there on the right, okay? So they don't match, doesn't make sense, okay? Um, same thing as if I put a night sky in here, it wouldn't make sense either, okay? There's a rainbow, looks like you can buy a rainbow. Um, even if I put something like this one, which has got the sky, the sun, okay, it doesn't make sense because the sky is clearly right, the sun is clearly right here, the shadows will be coming this way, right? So the light direction matters. So we need a sky that does not have the sun in it, okay? First hint. So let's take a look at some of these. Do we have any that have indirect sun? I'm just gonna go to Skylums, like a blue sky, okay? So this is something that it was like the one it was suggested, right? Here's the one that it was suggesting, right? Something like that, okay? So that's not so bad. It's a little bit bright on this side. So I think I'm just gonna flip it because we want the light coming from that side, right? and then we can align it, okay? So if I want to adjust the sky, see how that original sky is still there? We gotta make sure that we cover it, okay? So I wanna get down far enough, okay? Make sure that it's below the horizon for sure, okay? And I need to cover those, okay? So when I go with the global, that's gonna help, okay? So increasing the global slider, Closed gaps is the opposite. It brings back those other clouds. So I'm going to go this way. Let's see. Global is generally the, the best way. And if I had removed those clouds right before, that would have made the sky replacement easier. So you can still kind of see that one there, but it's not so bad, right? That kind of works, right? Atmospheric haze, when you increase this one, it takes away some of the contrast in the sky, right? So I'm just gonna darken it a little bit. I can make it bluer or give it a bit more warmth. That's actually not bad. I mean, it kind of feels like some yellow is picking up in there. Okay. How about something like that? 
Now, the problem with the sky, though, with the change sky, is that we're now adding another element that's bright to take away from is the road and the tree our subject, right? So be very careful of, you know, when you change a sky that you make one that isn't doing the opposite of what you're trying to do, okay? You can still see that underlying clouds there. That one's not too bad, right? That one's not too bad. Maybe give it a little more punch. Okay. Something like that. This one is better. And if we defocus it, right, maybe even just one, if we defocus it, it's going to help take up the effect, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your eye away from the sky. Okay. Cause if we put a big, bold sunset in there, right, we've completely taken your eye away from it. And the original clouds actually bring your eye over to that corner where we want them to be. Right. Once you add a sky, right, you can use the enhance AI tool and the sky enhancer and it will affect your new sky. So we can affect it that way. And we can also use the color tool, just like we did before, to affect either the hue. Okay, that's a little better color. And darken it. But you see how it's like, I don't know. It's just not, I'm not crazy about it, to be honest. The sky's not doing it for me. So I would probably just leave it, right? Remember your relight, okay? So relight, add some of the sky color into the image. So what are our thoughts here? I'm just gonna do a before and after here. Original sky, sky replacement. I'm not convinced that's even the best sky replacement yet. But original sky or sky replacement? What do you guys think? Tell me in the chat. Let's see if there's another one here. Let's see. See, we don't want a dramatic sky. I don't want something like this. Um, and please, whatever you do, don't use the one that everybody uses. It's like the same sunset. This one. <laughs> please don't use this one. Um, you see this in a million luminar things. Don't use that one ever. <laughs> it's a great sky, but um, I'm going to go to clear skies, actually. Let's go to California clear skies and try just a blue sky. Okay, so we're kind of getting rid of the, the cloud now. Aha, relight fixes that. So a problem there. There we go. So do we want just a clear sky? Right? So what are the thoughts? Original, 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 original. Everybody says original. Like the new sky, but not the robin's egg. What if I do one that's got a little bit of orange in it? Yeah, see, that doesn't work, does it? No. Nope. I like the one, the one that we had was actually not too bad. And where was that? <clears throat> was it this one? Okay, so not Robin's egg. What color do we want? More of this color. More like that. <clears throat> Something like that. Let's try that one. Okay, so now, and I haven't got the masking perfect in here because I can see there's some issues around the edge of the tree here, okay? So when you're doing your sky replacement, you definitely wanna check the mask. Um, there, closing gaps, see that? Solving some of these problems. And part of the problem is that it's got these clouds in the background, the original image, that it's trying to write over, right? So it's got extra work to do. 
Okay, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I would play with the masking a little bit more, but I'm gonna save this one. Um, we could also try the color harmony tool. I didn't didn't try that one yet. Okay, so we could say, okay, we want we want the blue darkened, or do we want to work on the green and the yellow? Right. So see what that what that does. It gives us more enhancement in the field, and then maybe we want. My little, where's my, I need to put mystical back in my favorites because I'm always using it and I took it out of my favorites. So there's mystical. There we go. So then when we apply it and you click apply, it's going to bring it back to where? Where's it going to bring it back to? Photoshop. Yes, you're right, Marty. We went back to Photoshop. Okay, so now here we are back in Photoshop. And I didn't do the best job of masking around there, but now you can see that Luminar Neo is applied as a layer. So all I need to do is do save. Remember, save, not save as, save, and then close. And when I close it, it's going to take me back to Lightroom. Um, actually, after I save it, it's going to take me back to Lightroom. So let's go back in here. And it should pop in right next to these ones here. What have I got sorted by? Okay, so it should come in next to this one, okay? But I agree. I like the original sky because it goes with the simplicity of the image. Um, it reminds me of the Microsoft background, the Windows, um, Microsoft Windows background that was popular for a long time, you know? Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're going to do one last comparison. Ignore my, my lousy masking job on the cloud there. I would have done a better job on that. But in the interest of time, I just wanted to get it done. All right. So vote. Original sky, new sky. And everybody so far is voting for the original sky. And I tend to agree. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want more step-by-step -step instructions to learn the software, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course. You'll find a link to it in the pinned comment below. Click either of the videos on the screen now to watch more photo editing tutorials using Luminar Neo, Lightroom, and Photoshop.